welcome to Empowering Keys for Kingdom Living with Dr. Brenda Jefferson, an apostle of the Lord who teaches in the authority of Jesus Christ through the leading of the Holy Spirit, imparting wisdom and knowledge for good success through Kingdom Living. Brought to you in part by Covenant Faith Praise and Worship Center, 9900 Rockington Road in Sherwood, Arkansas. And now, Empowering Keys for Kingdom Living with Dr. Brenda Jefferson. God bless you today. I'm Dr. Brenda Jefferson and welcome to Empowering Keys for Kingdom Living. People of God, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for saving me. You know, it is in Christ that we live, we move, and have our being. But not only that, it is in Christ that we have been made complete. I have come to declare and decree today that, yes, you're the head and not the tail, that you're above and not beneath. Yes, you're the lender and not the borrower. You're blessed going out and you're blessed coming in. As a matter of fact, your blessings are running to overtake you. People of God, I want to let you know today that you did not tune in by accident. God has a special blessing with your name on it. We are so excited today to have none other than the Apostle Gary Deloach of Praise Center for All Nations as our special guest. He has a powerful conference coming up. It's going to change lives. And so at this time, would you welcome, would you assist me in welcoming Apostle Gary Deloach? God bless you. So God glad you're you. here today. Good to be here today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just jump right into it. Uh, excited that you're here today and just want you to talk a little bit about your ministry, how you got started, how long you've been in the ministry, and then we're going to move into what's coming up. And then I just feel that God has a word yes. on the inside of you for the viewing audience today. God bless you, Apostle. I'm delighted to talk about my ministry. Mm. Uh, uh, this year, I'm celebrating 43 years of ministry. Ooh, praise God. And so you've been in the wilderness and out. In, <laughs> <laughs> in and out. Thank yes. God that I'm out. Yes, yes, Thank yes. Thank God that I'm proven, mm -hmm. tested. Thank you, and Lord. ready for battle and warfare. Yes, God. Yes, Amen. God. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the first couple of years was spent just uh, evangelizing. And the next mm -hmm. two years, after two years of starting the ministry, God mm -hmm. took me into pastoring mm. and there about nine years and then mm -hmm. God did something very radical in my life mm -hmm, very mm -hmm. radical. yeah yeah so I'm delighted to be here and just to say that throughout the times of the ministry uh, mm. God has done something in me that I had no idea had no reference to he mm. began to tell me he says I'm taking you from where you are my God, so my God. To set you before the people in a different way. Mm. And he told me, he said, I'm calling for specialists in the field. Wow. And I said, what? He's a specialist. Mm. He said, your music has been um, based on what you knew. He said, music is not for entertainment. Worship is not for entertainment. My and God. then what he said to me, he said, look, he said, for, for foot problems, you go to a foot doctor. Yes. If you have problems with your teeth, you go mm. to a, a, a dentist. Mm -hmm. He said, that's the same thing I'm doing in this hour. I'm diversifying. My God. He says, I want you to begin to specialize in the area of praise and worship. Praise and, and guess worship. what he told me Ooh. then? He Hallelujah. Says, I'm calling you to the apostleship. Mm, thank and you, Lord. your area of specialization will be praise and worship. Praise God. Praise God. You know, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, some uh, apostles that I, we were talking about you and we called you because that's who God says that you are the apostle of praise and worship Amen. would you elaborate just a little bit when we talk about praise and worship we don't want to assume that people know what you're talking about when you say praise and worship praise by definition is the um, call of God to the God that's on the inside of us mm, thank it's you Lord. speaking of who God is Mm -hmm. His nature, his very character. Wow. And somebody said, well, praise is lifting the hands. That's the small part of it. It's mm -hmm. singing songs. It's doing the music. That's the small part of it. Mm -hmm. But praise is the call of God when he created man. My God. Isaiah 43, 21 says, this people have I 
chosen mm. have I made and formed for myself. He said they would show forth my praise. My God, my so God. So praise does that. And when we get into worship, worship, worship is the overview. Mm. It's mm. more mm. intimate times with the Lord. My God. The Lord told me, he said, listen, he said, tell my people that I want them to have extravagant love for me. Wow. To have a relationship. Mm. You know, you're married and I'm married. Mm. Yes. To mm. have a relationship and work and, and embrace a relationship with our spouses. Yeah. We've got to have fellowship with them. Fellowship. We have to yeah. spend quality mm -hmm. time. Did, and when we do that, we get to know them better. My God, my God. So my worship God. is being intimate, extravagant love. I have a definition in my syllabus that says this. Worship is to stare in the face of God. Mm, my God, my God, my given God. Given of the total self unto God. Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, you wrote a book a yeah. few years ago. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the book and what's in the book? And I know that there are other books on the inside of you. Glory to God. But mm -hmm. let's just talk a little bit about the book that you wrote, what inspired that, and uh, what people can learn from that. What inspired the book was my calling. Ouch. You know, God calls us out. Mm -hmm. Takes us to someplace new. I had no point of reference about the ministry of worship. Wow. I hadn't read any books. I didn't know anything mm. about what he was leading me to. So I said, God, teach me to understand it. Mm -hmm. So he says, I want you to sit down and write. I want you to go to the scriptures. Mm, scriptures. I want you to find every so scripture. So that's your foundation. That's my foundation. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want you to find every scripture you can find that talks about praise, that talks about worship. My and God. And then he said, I want you to title it, entitle it, Understanding Praise and Worship. So that comes from the scripture, uh, wisdom is the principal there thing, mm -hmm. uh, get wisdom, but out of all you're getting, get, get understanding. an understanding. Because when all you right. understand, mm. you can make the application. My God, you my God. You can do a thing the right way when mm -hmm. you understand how to do it. And it's been my observation as I've traveled, and I never say to people, you don't know how to worship, or you don't mm. know what you're doing. I always say to them, look, um, God has a way, and we want to follow his prescribed way will get better results as we do it God's way. Yes, so I just yes. let them know I want to tell you and give you some revelation concerning what the scripture has. My God, my God, my God. All right, so let's move into something special is getting ready to take place Hallelujah. here in North Little Rock. Yes. Glory to God. Uh, there's about to be a shift, mm -hmm. a paradigm shift. Uh, God is about to shift the atmosphere here. So can you tell us what this great event or experience is about to take place? Praise and Worship Conference 2017. Woo, praise God. This is our God. fourth year. Mm. And the Lord said, I want you to have a conference. This is part of our vision so that we can teach the body of Christ what God is doing in this last hour. My God. I say last hour because something out of the small prophet Amos, mm. he's a minor prophet with a major, major revelation. Yes. He says out of the chapter 9 and the 11 verse, he says, in the last days, God is restoring. Three. He will restore the tabernacle, tabernacle of, of David. David. Yes. So if we say the tabernacle <laughs> of David, I've got to explain what that the, means. My God, so my now, God. Mm. He gets mm. this prophecy. Oh, I feel something Ooh, here. I don't know. He gets this prophecy <laughs> over almost 100 years after the tabernacle of David has been removed. My God, my God. So why would God give him 100 years after to say in the last days, in the last I'm day. going to restore the tabernacle of David because I'm going to do it because I'm going to give you the power to possess. I'll get into that reasoning later. Yes. But what he's telling him, I'm pleased with that tabernacle. My God. I want to bring it back. That's why mm. we're going back to the heart, heart of, of worship, worship. Understanding truly what it is, we have to have a heart for God ah, and going you, God. right mm. back to the center of mm. what God says to do. Mm. So in, the, in Acts, it's repeated. Yes, he it says, is. In the last days, I will restore the, the tabernacle, tabernacle that the day. residue of men, men. may seek after God. Yes, God. God. Yes, God. So yes. worship is not only just something for us to, to feel good. Mm -hmm. It is to enthrone God. Yes. Usher him in. in. I love that mm -hmm. word. To usher him in into our time. My God. Into our day. Yes. Into yes. our situations. Mm, into our you, circumstances. Yes, into yes, Into our yes. very lives. Mm -hmm. And it's all about relationship. Yes. Worship is about relationship. Most fellowship. Definitely. 
Praise God. Praise God. Listen, Vera and audience, we're going to take a break and we're going to come right back. Apostle Gary Deloach is going to share with us where the conference is going to be held, how you can get more information on it. But also, I just feel an unction in my spirit that there is a word from the Lord for you, the Vera and audience. We will be right back. God bless you today. I'm Pastor James Jefferson. I'm Apostle Brenda Jefferson, and we want to tell you about a great move of God that's happening at our church, Covenant Faith Praise and Worship Center in Sherwood, Arkansas. Over our years in ministry, God has blessed us to be a blessing to his people. In addition to our weekly services, we've fed the hungry, we've aided those in distress, We've prayed with people in need of a breakthrough. We've given comfort to those troubled and celebrated God's goodness, all according to the Great Commission. And now, glory to God. He's calling us higher. Owning our facilities and grounds debt-free will make valuable resources available. This will enable us to do even greater works for the kingdom so that men may see and glorify the Father. We know that nothing is too hard for God, and we believe such a miracle begins with a leap of faith. We're asking you, our viewing audience, our listening audience, to take that leap with us. By sowing as little as a $1 seed, or as much and as often as you can. You not only help us to lift up the kingdom of God, you also avail yourself of blessings that you and your family won't have room enough to receive. You have several options to give. You can go to our website at www.covenantfaithpwc.org, click on the Million Dollar Move of Faith tab and follow the prompts. You may also visit our Facebook page and click the donate button or download the Covenant Faith app on your smartphone. Click the Million Dollar Move of Faith icon and the Give button. Or you can contribute by calling Covenant Faith at 501-834-5477 or call Google Voice at 501-502-0535. Send your check or your money order to Covenant Faith, Million Dollar Move of Faith, 9900 Brockington Road, Sherwood, Arkansas, 72120. However you give, be assured that you are planting your seed in good ground and you will reap a bountiful harvest. May the Lord bless you and keep you is our prayer. Thank you today. We pray that you're being blessed tremendously with our special guest today, the Apostle Gary Deloach. Something powerful is coming to the city of North Little Rock. Let's talk a little bit about the conference, when it starts, how it was birthed, and how the people can register to be a part of it. Okay. Uh, the conference begins on September the 27th, Wednesday, September the 27th, will be held uh, at 7 p.m. that evening, then Thursday morning, the 28th, mm -hmm. there will be what's called the Judah School of Worship. Mm -hmm. We're going to have teaching sessions. I love daytime sessions. Yes, yes, yes. Some, something about those day sessions. Yes. People come hungry. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be teaching on things like congregational worship. Wow. I'm going to teach on um, returning, recovering the heart and the passion for worship. My God. For the mm -hmm. presence of God. Yes. Uh, Lady Deloach is going to be teaching on one of the seven Hebrew words for praise mm. called Barak and liberty my God. in the presence of God, how to have liberty. And mm. then one of my spiritual daughters is also mm. going to be teaching um, from the ministry called Beyond the Dance Network. Mm. She talks about, she teaches prophetic dance wow. and talks about what's beyond the dance, this, my that God. relational thing. Mm -hmm. And she's going to be teaching also on prophetic dance. Wow. And then on Thursday night, 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to be teaching again. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, this year, I want you to teach. Yes. Demonstrate. Yes. We're going to mm -hmm. teach. They took six paces mm -hmm. going into the presence of the Lord. Oh, and yes. They will oh, be yes. worship. Worship. He said, teach. Get the people to demonstrate. My so God. I'm going to be teaching. And then Friday will be a banquet wow. in my honor, celebrating yeah. <laughs> 43 years. 43 and years. And you're going to be a Woo. part of that. Amen. Amen. Looking forward things. to it. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Amen. Amen. Can you tell us where the uh, conference will be held and the times nightly that it will start and daytime? The conference will be held at the Hilton Garden Inn in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, that's on McCain, East, East McCain Boulevard, and the services will begin 7 p.m. each evening. And you don't want to miss it because we're going to soak in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. Can you tell us what your theme is this year? The theme is mm. back to the heart of worship. There's a, there's a song that we've done for mm. years. When the music fades and all is stripped away. Oh, my God. And I simply come mm. longing just to bring something that's a worth mm. that would bless your heart. Yes, God. I bring you more than a song for mm. a song in mm. itself. Mm. 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 It's not what you have required. You're looking and searching much deeper within mm. through the way things appear. My God. Your God looking into my heart. Woo. And the Lord said it's time to come back, back. to the basics. Come back, back to, to his heart, heart mm -hmm. because you cannot worship without your heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, I'm excited. I pray that our viewing audience, our listening audience, you are being blessed tremendously. Listen, we want you to be a part of this conference. Can you tell us how they can get more information about the conference? And then, and then, we're going to hear you share what God has laid on your heart for the viewing audience. Get ready to be blessed and transformed. You can get more information about the conference by calling the ministry number, and that's 501-983-2355. Again, 501-983-2355. Or you can look on Facebook at uh, uh, Pray Center Church for All Nations, mm. and you can pull up the flyer there in more information, or you can just begin to touch us at Garrity Loach Ministries at mm. yahoo.com. Praise God. Praise God. Well, listen, viewing audience, listening audience, get ready. The apostle of praise and worship, Apostle Gary Deloach, is going to share with you now some of the things that you can expect at the conference, but also there is a word from the Lord for you. Listen, if you will. God bless you. Amos 9 and 11, mm. and I'll say it again, talks about God's heart and his prophetic desire for worship and praise. He says to Amos, he says, uh, I'm going to restore the tabernacle of David. And in this, he's restoring one of the eight major restorational truths that has been lost. Mm. That truth is that worship will usher Jesus back to the earth. Oh, that worship creates an atmosphere for Jesus and God himself to perform mighty miracles mm -hmm. in the midst of his people. Mm -hmm. I was singing a song years ago in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, while worshiping and getting ready to minister. And I sang the song, I Just Want to Be With You. And God spoke immediately back to me and said, son, tell my people. They always want to come up here. They want to see this vision of heaven. I want them to know I want to be with them. I want to be in the midst of your presence to do healing, deliverance, miracles, and do things that you've never seen. So he says, the prophetic purpose, he says that they may possess the Edomites. Mm. To possess, that's the heathen. Mm -hmm. He says, praise and worship is not only something just to change the atmosphere, but it is to reach out and bring forth the sinner that's out there. My God. He said to possess the Edomites, they were the heathens. And Psalm two, he says, I will give you the heathen for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your very possession. Mm -hmm. Believers, he's restoring it because there was a time when men went away from the presence of God. Listen mm -hmm. to what God says in Isaiah 29 and 13. Also says it in Mark and Matthew, but he says this, this people draw near to me with their mouth. And with their lips, they do honor me. But their hearts are far from me. Isaiah mm. says, their hearts mm. have been removed mm. from me. Mm. The heart is the seat of the emotions. It's where our passion, it's where our desires come from and emanate from. 
God wants us to begin to desire him like we've never desired anything else before. That's why he created, created us in his image to desire him. Psalm 45 says this, my heart is indicting or overflowing with the good matter, translated a good thing. What is the thing? The goodness of God. The wholeness of God, the authority of God. When we talk to God about who he is, he releases himself into that moment and into that situation. So in Mark, Jesus picks up what Isaiah says. He says, they draw nigh to me with their mouth and with their lips. They do honor me, but their hearts are not there. I begin to see how that many times we come for a worship or a praise service and we spend 30 minutes and we still go home empty. We still go home with unanswered questions. But God speaks out of his presence, beloved. We've got to know that there is a revival of praise and worship in the last days because God prophesied it mm -hmm. through this little brother called Amos. And because there's a revival of it, guess what? God ordained this conference for us to begin to provoke people to come back to the very presence of God. And guess what's going to happen? We're going to see the spirit of unity begin to come forth. Yes. We're going to see that God is going to begin to bring forth the ministry of Jesus in a very powerful, powerful way. I'm reminded of the woman who came to the house of Simon, the, the, who was the leper that God had delivered. He invites Jesus to his home. While there, Jesus is really, apostle, bored. Mm. He was bored because they were not really giving him what he wanted. Here comes a woman outside the body uh. of Christ, mm. a woman of ill Here. repute, bad reputation. She was called to be a harlot or a mm. prostitute in our, our language. Mm. And she came to the house of Simon and she went straight to the feet of Jesus. As she's there, she's doing something that Jesus wants from all of us ah. to worship. She bows before him My God. to humble herself before the presence of a loving Christ. Mm. And as she humbles herself, she feels her unworthiness, but she begins to give him what I call in my book, elements of worship. Mm. Those elements are, first of all, humility. Humble yourself yes. under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due yes. season. So she humbles she gives him tears. The Bible says a broken and a contrite heart, God will never despise. She begins to let the tears flow. She's in an act or state of what I call repentance. And something happens with this woman that's not short of miraculous. She gets forgiveness mm. in the presence of the Lord. She literally makes her own altar. My God. Nobody lays hands on her, but she begins to let the tears flow. Then she begins to take her hair that was already down. When a woman came into the presence of people with her hair down, she was called to be a loose woman. Mm. She didn't belong to anybody. So she takes her hair and she begins to dry the feet of Jesus. But she's doing a prophetic act. She's anointing him for his burial. Mm. She's anointing his authority. Mm. She's anointing his service. Mm. She's anointing his walk by anointing his feet. He's going to walk into different places before his time to go to Calvary. Uh -huh. So as she's anointing him, you know what happens? Something powerful happens. She's loving on him much. She takes the most expensive thing that she owns. Worship requires a gift. Worship demands a sacrifice. Uh, as you. she's worshiping, she gets forgiveness. And Jesus says to his critics, this woman, because she has loved me much she is forgiven much because she has loved me much she is forgiven much and he makes the most powerful statement on that day he says wherever the gospel is preached oh god you must talk about this woman's story wherever the gospel is preached talk about her story how she did this because it's beyond just worshiping with emotion. <laughs> the emotion of her heart comes out. But she needed something from God. I tell you, when you need something from, from God, all you got to do is get in his presence. 
All you got to do is come in. You don't need people to lay hands on you. Laying hands is in order in the scripture. But to get in God's presence, he has already pre-discerned your need. Mm -hmm. So he says, preach about this woman and talk about it. One more scripture I want to bring to your attention. And that's out of St. John, the fourth chapter. There was another woman who came to Jesus. And she came to him and Jesus began to initiate a conversation with her to give him some water to drink. Yeah. She said, are you greater than our fathers? They drink from this well and our fathers worship. She, he said to her, your fathers worship what they didn't know about. Mm. But he said, if you knew who was talking to you, my God, my you would have asked him for water mm. and he would have mm. given you living water. Oh, she got interested. Yes. Tell me about the water mm. that you're talking about. He says, the well of water shall be in you, a well springing up into everlasting life. Mm. It's water that you will never thirst again. And he told her, he says, listen, the hour cometh and now is that they that worship the Lord, they must worship in spirit and in truth. Glory to God. Mm. Worship in spirit and in truth. So, beloved, we're going to be teaching concerning how to enter into the presence of the Lord. Yes. We're going to be talk, talking us. about the dynamics of worship. We're going to be talking about what praise does and how it releases the power of God in the earth. Chronicles talks about the, the, the prophet, the king, the man of God, uh, who was uh, humiliated by the fact that there were enemy nations who were coming against him. And the Bible says Jehoshaphat uh, was terrified. You know, we're in the day when terror is coming against our nation, but God ordained something called praise and worship. And God spoke through a prophet. Apostle, we need the connection of the prophet. Yes. And the minstrels and the psalmists in this hour because they go together. The prophet, the seers were trained by music My God. in the Old Testament. Mm. Glory to God. That's good so right there. God said, listen, uh, get up off your face. He's praying. Prayer is always in order. But this was an occasion when God ordained that praise go forth so he could release his power concerning that situation. And Jehoshaphat heard from an in-house prophet named Jehaziel. Jehaziel was a descendant, direct descendant from David's line. My God. Of Asaph, David's chief musician. Mm, mm. And he speaks and says, you don't need to fight in this battle. For the battle belongs to God. Hallelujah. And doesn't belong to you. Mm. He said, get the singers out. Get the praise team out. Yes, God. And get them out early in the morning. Mm. Get them up on the mountain of Tekoa. Mm. And he said, when you begin to give them the cue, tell them to praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Mm. And his mercy endured forever. Mm. Praise the Lord for his love endured forever. And apostle, when they begin to sing the song of the Lord. My God. The prophetic song, mm. the song of love, mm -hmm. the song of deliverance. Mm -hmm. God began to bring confusion upon the enemy. My he God. will do the same thing for you. Yeah. The enemy doesn't, doesn't believe that you can rejoice after he's hit you with something. Mm. He don't, he's betting against you that you'll praise the Lord when you're going through something. But My when God. you can praise the Lord with all your heart, mm -hmm. then deliverance will surely come. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. One more. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you one more thing concerning mm -hmm. the conference. On the 29th, our special guest is going to be one of my spiritual sons, mm. Minister Merlon Devine, mm. who is a tremendous minstrel in his own right. Praise God.